What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Comic Lee Boston. My name is Big Cam and today is episode 181 and we got a whole nother weekly nerdy news to catch you up on and all the juicy details that happened over the last week. And just briefly I want to say uh, I came out with a movie review for a movie called The Killer currently on Peacock right now. A John Woo remake from his original Killers to a more modern uh, movie of the killers uh, with Natalie Emmanuel and Omar Sy. I really enjoyed it. The video's got like 270 something views on it right now. And at one point it had 28 comments. Uh, but it was one guy started it all and commented, This movie's trash. And I simply commented underneath it, what makes this movie trash and you know some other people jumped in this wasn't trash i enjoyed it and then like four or five comments later that same guy was like uh i didn't think the acting was good i didn't like this part i didn't like that part blah blah, blah. that guy's comment still on the channel now another guy hopped on this train and started just telling other people their opinions were wrong and uh that he has taste and no one else does and like you don't have taste i have taste and i was like what is this guy seven so, you know, if you're being rude or mean to me in the comments, you're going to get blocked from the channel. That's not the type of community I'm trying to create. Uh, but if you're being mean to other commenters, you're certainly also going to get blocked. So, you know, just keep it civil in the comment section. You can have different opinions and disagree, but you don't have to be a dick about it. You know what I mean? But... Let's get in. I just wanted to briefly say that for a moment, because at one point, if you guys had seen, it had you know almost 30 comments on it and now it's got like 10 uh so after i blocked that guy i think it erases his comments so i was like ah eh, should i have left his comments there just to have the amount of comments on that video but no that's not the type of uh vibe i'm trying to spread and it's my channel so i can decide whether or not people get to be a dick in the comment section below and most of the time if it's not me being a dick then no one else gets to be a dick you know what i mean <laughs> like be nice down there um you know have conversations, not arguments. That's not cool. Nobody, you know, you're strangers. Nobody wants to argue with a stranger on the internet for no reason. You know, like it, end, it always ends the same. The guy gets blocked. We don't care. You know, we move on. <laughs> but jumping into our first subject of the day, Sonic 3 has had a trailer that is supposed to be coming out for like almost a week now. Still hasn't come out, but the rumor is that it will come out Tuesday, tomorrow. But I'm kind of excited to see this trailer because my favorite Sonic character has always been Shadow and it's going to be voiced by Keanu Reeves, which is awesome. So keep your eyes peeled for a Sonic 3 trailer coming out pretty soon, which should be great because Knuckles and Tails are already in that universe from Sonic 2, I believe, right? Jim Carrey, I think, is returning as Eggman or whatever the name of the villain is, uh, Dr. Eggman, something like that. I don't know. But speaking of Keanu Reeves and The Acolyte had been canceled last week. I made a video about that. And unfortunately, you know, things just happened. That show didn't get the viewership it deserves. The discourse online, the people arguing over how bad a show it is. The, the people that think it's a bad show being extra loud on the internet. And the people that like the show getting drowned out by those haters. It, it's a real problem. But... In the show, the man from Squid Game, Lee Jung Jae, I believe is his name, he played Master Soul. And originally, apparently, Star Wars wanted Keanu Reeves to play that role. Which, you know, if you can imagine Keanu Reeves as Soul, that show might be entirely different. You know what I mean? Like that Lee Jung Jae might have more of a deep, dark, you know,ness behind him. Uh, just because of how deep Keanu's voice is, you know, and the fight scenes probably would have been just as great because Keanu's got all that fight training. He would just have to add a lightsaber instead of a knife or a sword or a gun. Um, and I think he would slip into that very easily. Uh, Keanu's a beast. But, man, that uh, hearing that news hurt me because I was like, fuck, Keanu could have been in Star Wars? But now that's another rumor going around is that Lucasfilm really, really wants Keanu Reeves to play some role in an upcoming Star Wars project. Now, if he's not going to be a Jedi, he might as well be a Sith, you know, like that John Wick style black on black suit. We know he's got darkness in him with that long hair, that beard, that 
sharp jaw, that brokenish nose, you know, like, uh, <laughs> Keanu's the man, though, so if Keanu wants to be a Jedi, a Sith, a, a, a Han Solo type, or a rebel, or, or a, a smuggler, or a scoundrel, you know, like, he, he can play whatever he wants, I'd be cool with it. But also in development right now, uh, rumors around Marvel developments has been Hawkeye Season 2 is in rumored de development along with Moon Knight Season 2. Two things that I would very desperately want. Moon Knight Season 1 was awesome. Oscar Isaac, Ethan Hawke. You know, I really enjoyed the darkness, the way that the characters swip around in his brain and he doesn't know really what's going on and neither do we. So it's kind of like this mystery and then we figure it out and then at the end he throws us through a loop anyways. Cool stuff going on. Hawkeye Season 2, now that Jeremy Renner's kind of back in action and doing his thing and, you know, not ever going to be fully healed from that accident that he had, but at least he's starting to feel a little bit more like himself, you know, at least it seems. And, and I really think he, as Hawkeye, is one of the best people and he's been around for so long, so he's one of my favorite characters in the MCU, even though he doesn't really have many powers other than the fact that he's a good archer, you know, but... Uh, he always seems to find a way to get the job done, and then um, Haley Steinfeld, Kate Bishop. I fucking love Kate Bishop so much. Maybe I just love Haley Steinfeld, but rumors for Hawkeye season two is that the brother of Clint Barton, Barry Barton, something like that, um, will will get introduced, and he's also kind of like a, an archer. So say Jeremy Renner doesn't want to continue on because he doesn't feel he can do the stunts quite like he used to maybe he passes the baton on to Kate and his brother you know and then his brother gets to be this new Hawkeye character I don't know I think Kate Bishop's gonna end up with a female Avengers or a young Avengers with Kamala Khan maybe Ant-Man's daughter you know some other things so that I'm, I'm interested in what's going on there but then in other Marvel news just the other day there was uh, released information that James Spader would be returning for a Vision show, right? So this is like kind of confirmed pretty pretty big. I don't know if it was Deadline or The Hollywood Reporter that, that came out with this news, but it was all over the internet. And obviously the show is gonna be after WandaVision, so it's probably gonna be around White Vision, which a lot of us have been speculating that we wanna see and we wanted to see in Multiverse of Madness. But if he's gonna get his own spinoff show like Agatha is, maybe it's gonna be called Vision Quest, but it, currently it's just called Vision. Uh, but Vision, White Vision, Paul Bettany, is going to be alongside James Spader voicing Ultron again. Oh, and we all, you know, whether or not you like Age of Ultron as a movie, we can all agree that James Spader ate the shit out of Ultron's voice lines, you know what I mean? Like, really made that character something, and I love James Spader, so that was big news to me. But what's also interesting is that they released that information on Wanda and Vision's anniversary, which, you know, not the WandaVision television show anniversary, the anniversary of the two characters of when they got together. And if you guys don't know when that is, go back and rewatch WandaVision, the first episode, at the end of it, they talk about their anniversary and, oh, it should be our anniversary, and gets a ring on his finger, and then the show goes on through the generations, and now they're a married couple, and God, WandaVision's so good. I I'm currently rewatching WandaVision in preparation for September for Agatha all along. Uh, so I'm excited, man. I'm excited for that. Also in the Marvel realm, uh, a quick little snippets got released the other day and Marvel officially posted the Red Hulk standing up behind the podium, which apparently he's not just standing up, he's growing into the Hulk, which is kind of cool. Um, but we also get this shot of the team in Thunderbolts and we got Alexi in the Red Guardian outfit, we got Bucky back there with the long hair, it looks like Ghost, uh, something Star, Ava Star uh, from Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, you got Yelena, Florence Pugh, which we all love. And then you got Johnny Mayonnaise back there, John Walker from Captain uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I always say Captain America and Winter Soldier. But no, that's a movie. Falcon and the Winter Soldier was a TV show. And then that show ends with Sam becoming Captain America. The final title scene kind of says Captain America in the Winter Soldier. But that's already been a thing. <laughs> so you're like, damn. <laughs> like, it just, words jumble themselves together and you gotta figure it the fuck out. But comment below, do you think 
the events of Captain America Brave New World will directly relate to the events of Thunderbolts or maybe are they going to be happening uh, kind of around the same time and while Sam is fighting the leader in Red Hulk the Thunderbolts are going to be trying to get Bob aka Sentry with Val and apparently this elevator is leading to Avengers Tower so maybe in the Thunderbolts we're finally going to learn who bought Avengers Tower back in uh, Spider-Man Homecoming we learned that Avengers Tower got bought and we still don't know who bought it my guess is either now it's going to be the CIA and it's going to be Val the head of the CIA that's got this building for the Thunderbolts as a headquarter or it's going to be Fisk and maybe Fisk and Val work together. Fisk is running for mayor in Daredevil Born Again. So, you know, the world is kind of... I think we're getting, like, a New York events happening. We're getting, like, a San Francisco events happening with Ant-Man and Shang-Chi and whoever else is going to go out there. I, I have a feeling we're going to be getting a West Coast Avengers type of story. And that might even be what the Vision Quest show is. He's... he's on a quest to assemble an Avengers, but on a different coast type of idea. I don't know, but either way, DC is where the White House is and where Captain America Brave New World, some of it is, but we also know that he's gonna be in the Indian Ocean or wherever the hell Tiamat's hand and head is. So, and we know that from Eternals, just for anyone that isn't fully caught up the way I am. But if you have any questions on all this stuff, comment below, you know, I definitely got you, or message me on my other uh, social medias, links down in the description below. We only got a few more things to talk about today and then we'll wrap it up here. But I do want to talk about this concept art that has released for Wesley Snipes' Blade in Deadpool and Wolverine. And some of these outfits I really enjoyed. This first one that right here kind of looks like Mad Maxi. Uh, he's got a sword and like an Uzi like taped together. He's kind of got like blood stains all over his outfit. Kind of got like spiked, slicked back hair. Uh, I kind of dig that outfit. That that one feels very like voidish, very Mad Maxy. Kind of like how that void felt. The next one feels like kind of pimpish, you know, vampire pimp. You know, like he's got the slicked flat top hair, like the same way he did. But he's got these red glasses on. He's got a big gun. He's just kind of got like chains on and shit. And I, I, I dig that one kind of a little bit. You know, I call that pimp blade. Uh, this next one's kind of pretty much just the exact same outfit that he had in the Blade movies. And honestly, they probably could have brought that back and it still would have looked good. You know, it, it looks very much so Blade. You know what I mean? Like with the, the chest armor, the black pants, the little silver bu belt buckles, little silver accents, the blade down the middle of the back, the giant trench coat, the black gloves, you know? Honestly, seeing Blade Wesley Snipes in Deadpool Wolverine almost made me do a full Blade rewatch. And I had just seen those recently for like the first time. Uh, and first real time, you know, where you sit down as an adult and get a full, you know, embedding into your brain of what this is. I still say I buy Blade 2, it's phenomenal, but the other two, mm. Blade 3 is pretty much just Ryan Reynolds getting to do a Deadpool character-esque, you know, and you're like, oh wow, this is Deadpool without the mask. This is Deadpool before he was Deadpool, <laughs> you know, like, um, but Blade 2 is, is just phenomenal, a good movie. And this last concept out outfit is kind of like a I, I really dug this one. I was like, ooh, this would have been a very interesting blade. He's got a pistol on his hip, but he's really just got like, just a buttoned up like samurai look where he's just got his arms behind his back. Like he is just a proficient wielder of sword, you know, like just a full on samurai master. And I would have loved to have seen him just one blade. Uh, but that probably would have take a, a good amount of sword training for Wesley Snipes to get to that level to, to make it look like he was actually that proficient on screen and I don't think they had him that much or that long um, but either way really cool to see Wesley Snipes played back and now I really hope he ends up getting that Wolverine Logan-esque send-off with Blade even though Deadpool Wolverine kind of was that send-off maybe Secret Wars right around the corner here coming up in September 
Uh, I believe it will be September 19th will be the first episode drop, maybe two episodes. Uh, they can sometimes do that two episode premiere of a show. Uh, but the 18th is when Agatha All Along comes out. So expect either the 19th morning or 18th night uh, a Agatha All Along episode breakdown coming out. I will be definitely talking about that. And I also want to do The Penguin. They will be kind of running at the same time, but you'll hear what I have to say in a second. So the 18th is Agatha all along. September 19th is when The Penguin comes out. But then I believe the next episode doesn't come out till the 29th. You know, so just looking at the calendar here, the 18th, Agatha All Along, will drop on a Wednesday. And then Thursday, the 19th, is when the Penguin will drop. And then it will not drop for another full week, right? So the 26th would be the following Thursday. And it's not till the 29th, that following Sunday, right? So it's over, I think, 10 days from uh, the 19th to the 29th. So you get that full, you know, big period. So I'm thinking they're going to drop this first episode and for 10 days let the word of mouth build this episode. Hey, you got to watch that. So then get all these people to watch the first episode in the first 10 days, hopefully to the point that they watch the second episode. But a Penguin, you know, DC show that is going to be an HBO original, I'm into it. And we now know uh, from shots that have been getting released that Clancy Brown is going to be playing Salvatore Maroney opposite Colin Farrell's Penguin, and I, I don't know if you know Clancy Brown, but he has one of the most iconic voices ever in the industry. Phenomenal voice. He's a great voice actor. He's also just a great actor, period. He was just in uh, Ahsoka as a voice actor. He was in the show Rebels as a voice actor, but now he got to play that same character in Ahsoka, which I found cool. Two more things. Last little bit of news, and then the other thing is just the last topic I want to talk about. But... Apple TV has uh, revealed to, I believe, Deadline is who broke this, that Ted Lasso will be returning for season four. This is big news for us white folks, <laughs> as the internet like to say. This is white people news, Ted Lasso. No, this is anyone that has Apple TV Plus news. You don't have to be white to specifically have Apple TV Plus. <laughs> but, oh well. Uh, Ted Lasso is a phenomenal show. If you have Apple TV+, Plus, uh, there's two things you need to watch on there ASAP, and that's Ted Lasso and uh, The Instigators. A funny movie and a funny-ass show. And the cast of Ted Lasso, right? As funny as it is, it also has such heartfelt writing and such, like, real big character moments that make you cry, and then a second later, they're making you laugh your ass off. Uh, but they're starting to confirm that the cast is coming back. Brett Goldstein will be back as Roy Kent, everyone's favorite. Rebecca will be back. Uh, I'm sure everyone will be back. I mean, th th this show was a big community. I'm sure there's not going to be anyone that's like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to do a season four. Like, no, I think they're all going to be back. You're friggin' Higgins, you know, uh, Football is Life, Danny Rojas, you know, like all of them. All of them are going to be back. At least I hope so. So, comment below, have you seen Ted Lasso? And if you haven't, this is a great time to go get yourself an Apple TV and get your Apple TV Plus, because it's worth it. Definitely worth it. But my final bit of news, I just want to talk a little video games here for the gaming nerds. I just got Black Myth Wukong the other day. That had been blowing up all over the the internet and, and said sold like 600 million copies in the first weekend or something. Just an absolute outrageous, you know, blow up for that game and I think it was honestly so big that it was slowing down the servers quite a bit my, my PlayStation was struggling the other day trying to download it but once it got downloaded over the weekend it was pretty good um, but uh, the Black Myth Wukong is a very interesting game but I have another game that I'm even more interested in that's coming out tomorrow or even I think tonight at midnight but tomorrow I will certainly be playing Star Wars Outlaws and we get to finally, I've been waiting for this for a year, and I can't believe it's finally here. But Star Wars Outlaws, you're going to be able to fly around, space, on the ground, open world. It's K, you play as a woman, K-Vess, with this little, uh, 
I don't remember the Jinx, I think is his name, the little alien thing on her shoulder. And then your partner in crime at one point, I believe is this droid, kind of like a K2SO from like Andor. But you get to play as a scoundrel, as a rebel, you know, like somebody, you know, an outlaw, you know, you get, you can be very bad, you can be very good. It's going to have kind of that level of justness that uh, you can get in Red Dead Redemption where you can play as a good guy and only kill when you have to and not kill people that are innocent or you can play as a bad guy and kill fucking everyone you see you know like i don't know but i'm, I'm definitely interested uh i believe this is ubisoft made this and i believe they also are the same people that made the jedi survivor games correct me in the comments if i'm wrong um but to me i've been waiting for another star wars game since jedi survivor and jedi survivor is much more of a solo campaign type of thing where this feels like that but maybe slightly more open world and just slightly different uh different mechanics you know and, and plus you're not gonna be wielding a lightsaber you're not gonna be a jedi so you know just a different type of vibe but i still think around the same type of time period so i'm guessing maybe we might see some characters like that you know i know for sure we see job of the hut in the trailer um, you know, so we know he's alive, <laughs> so we could maybe bump into a Boba, we could maybe bump into a Cal Kestis, you know, or a Mando, or a, you know, Luke Skywalker, whatever. I'm, I'm very curious to see what kind of things happen throughout this game. Maybe you bump into a Han Solo, you are being a, a scoundrel, you know, so chewy, that would be cool. Uh, but I don't know, and, and I'm fucking super eager to jump into it you're gonna get speeder bikes this is concept art we're looking at here uh the game looks very beautiful from the slight couple minutes of gameplay i've seen it seems like it's gonna play really well um and, and it just looks mighty impressive yeah i think this was massive games and ubisoft made this which i believe is the same people as the jedi survivor if it's not it's the same you i know ubisoft made that avatar frontiers game um I believe, <laughs> I think, you know, I, I say this stuff like facts, but then I have to go in my head and I'm like, is that a fact? I don't know. Um, correct me in the comment section below. I'm sure you will. But if you've made it this far in the video, I highly appreciate you. My name's Big Cam and you probably hopefully know that already. But if you don't go check out my other social medias below, uh, Big Cam, two G's in the big, pretty much anywhere. You'll see this ugly monk, uh, comically Boston at gmail.com is the com, the Comically Boston email. If you have anything you'd like to write in to talk about, some fan mail, some topics of discussion, uh, any movie recommendations for me, you can send those that way, or you can drop them in the comment section, or you could send them to me on my other social medias. But if you want to support this channel, and I know you do, and if you made it this far, you definitely are supporting me already, but drop a like on this video, a comment. Uh, watch the video all the way to the end, watch another one after this, subscribe if you're new, hit that bell so you don't miss future content. I really, really appreciate everyone that sticks around and watches any of these videos or stumbles across them. You guys are the best, and I will see you beautiful people in the next video. Peace.